electricity. And its hardware is very important to David Lynch, most especially in Twin Peaks and the yet-to-be-filmed Ronnie Rocket. Both feature a very short character who is associated with electricity and the color red, the arm by his curtains and clothes, and Ronnie by his outrageous pompadour. One of the great architects of the electric environment was Charles Proteus Steinmetz, a pioneer of alternating current electricity, the kind that Ronnie Rocket runs on, and who happened to be both extremely short and very red, as in socialist. He's less well-known today than Edison or Tesla, but Steinmetz was similarly an icon of electrical wizardry, the in-house genius of General Electric, just as Tesla was for Westinghouse. Tesla is known as the godfather of AC, but it was Steinmetz who figured out how to manage the widespread distribution of alternating current in a user-friendly form. But he first gained recognition for working out the laws of magnetic hysteresis, which we'll return to later. Steinmetz is very cool. You should definitely learn more about him somewhere else. For our purposes, he was a red electric wizard who was very short. Plus, a few other coincidences that might turn your head. First, there's the unexpected evolution of the arm from a diminutive man in red into a tree. What kind of character turns into a tree? Well, Steinmetz's middle name was Proteus, after the shape-shifting sea god of Greek mythology who will tell you secrets if you can catch him and hold on as he rapidly changes form. In Homer's Odyssey, the last thing Proteus transforms into before yielding to the diamond hands of Menelaus is a tree. It could be a coincidence, but his surname means stonecutter or stonemason, evoking the idea of a powerful secret lodge. It could be a coincidence, but what about the fact that the day that Steinmetz was born, April 9th, 1865, is directly referenced by Twin Peaks? That was also the date that General Lee surrendered to General Grant at Wilmer McLean's house, triggering the end of the Civil War, the very event that is reimagined in Season 2, with Dr. Jacoby as General Grant surrendering to Ben Horn as General Lee. That scene even includes a reference to the color red, with when Audrey introduces herself as McLean's daughter, Scarlet. Which is odd, since he did have daughters, but none named Scarlet. We are told that Ben wants to reverse the outcome of the war to soothe the trauma of his recent losses, but why is it this event which speaks to him so strongly? As if he's overwhelmed by a subconscious intuition that his troubles were somehow born that day? Why does he feel compelled to reverse the charge of the war, so to speak? Could that be related to the sinister reversed electricity of Ronnie Rocket and the famously reversed speech of the arm and friends? Obviously, there's a lot more going on with these strange characters than simply representing Steinmetz, but there's enough resonance between them to wonder if it's deliberate, especially if there really is something to that theory about Twin Peaks encoding aspects of the actual hardware of electrical technologies as described by Twin Perfect. If that is the case, then Lucy's cellular phone problem is clearly a major key to decoding the return as a whole. After all, it is Lucy who subdues Mr. C, and she is not subtle about associating that climactic action with the resolution of her strange inability to understand cellular phones. Defeating the antagonist of the return is explicitly associated with understanding media. Which brings us back to magnetic hysteresis, the tricky patterns of energy loss when a metal is repeatedly charged and discharged, as in a heater turning on and off, or a rechargeable battery. It was Steinmetz who first formalized the hysteresis loop, which looks a lot like that crazy wailing worm from a razor head. The most familiar example of magnetic hysteresis is a thermostat, where delayed switching allows for a much more efficient use of energy and less stress on the mechanism than if it were to switch on and off very rapidly as it hovers right over the target temperature. Could this connection help to make sense of why the thermostat, specifically not understanding the thermostat, was the subject of Lucy's cell phone conversation with Sheriff Truman before he shocked her by appearing in the station? Either way, to understand the return, we will need to get to the bottom of exactly what it was 
that Lucy failed to grok about cell phones. But that's a big topic for another time. For now, we're just suggesting that her questions about the thermostat may relate to the arm via the Wizard of Schenectady, Charles Proteus Steinmetz. <laughs>